Hello, uh, good evening to all my students, myself, Shoikot Mitro from Shotish Chandra Memorial School. I taught science over there and my subject is physics. So before starting my lesson, I want to say some uh, main things regarding whatever is going on nowadays in our uh, country, you can say, or worldwide. That you know, nowadays, uh, entire world is suffering from COVID-19 or coronavirus. So being a science teacher, I think it's my responsibility to award all of you uh, what you have to do uh, during these lockdown days. So to come out from these adverse situations, you have to maintain some safety measures every day. First, to stay safe, to stay healthy, to stay strong, you have to stay at your home. Second, if you, uh, you want to go outside for your any kind of urgency, then of course cover your mouth and nose with mask. Then next, after doing your work, come back to your home, then of course, try to wash your all the clothes, whatever you wore beforehand, then you wash your hands and legs, then enter to your main room. So these are the main safety measures have to be taken during your these lockdown days. Uh, these are the main thing. Now, I'm going to start my lesson, my Subject is science already told. So, uh, first of all, as a science teacher, you have to know what is science. So, this thing is that science means the study of knowledge about the physical world and natural laws. So, this is the main thing. You can take a note from here. What is science? Science means the study of knowledge about the physical world and the natural laws. Now, you can classify the science in three parts generally. What are these? First, physics, then chemistry, then biology. These are the main three parts of science. Now, the next part is that why do we study science? Why do we study science? Lot of reasons are behind that, but I will say the two basic points on it. First, to understand the world around us means whatever is going on every day in our life, you have to study properly to know what is science. Next part is that it helps to solve problems easily and decision decision making in many areas of life. I am going to repeat it again. It helps to solve problems easily and decision making in many areas of life. Okay, now my, I have chosen my class 6. So first chapter according to your NCRT book which is food and Food, where does it come from? Means, first of all, what is food and what are the sources of it? So, first of all, I want to say what are the main keywords you have to study or you have to give more and more emphasis on these chapters according to your NCRT book. So, one more thing I want to say before I if you don't have your NCRT book right now with you, don't get panicked or don't worry about that. Whatever I'm going to teach you today. So you follow these things properly. I think you should get helpful from this. So now the main keywords are from this chapter. Uh, first of all, ingredients. Then edible parts or eatable parts. Then what is nectar? What are called sprouted seeds? 
Next, what who, no, what are kind of animals are known as herbivores, carnivore, and omnivore. So on this topic, you have to give more and more emphasis. Next, the main topic is here. What is food? What is food? So I have already written over here. You can take a note from it, which is. Food is any substance consumed to provide nutritional support for an organism. What is that? I am saying it again. Food is any substance consumed to provide nutritional support for an organism. I hope it is clear to all of you. Next, the topic should be like that. What should be the main sources of food? What should be the main sources of food? First of all, two main sources are there for the food. One is plant, another one is animal. Means one is plant source, another one is animal source. These are the two main sources from where we can get the food. Next, what are the basic components of food? What are the basic components of food? First of all, carbohydrate. Next, protein. Third, fat. Then, minerals. Then, vitamin or vitamin. Next, water. And, roughage or dietary fibers. These are the main components of food. So now I will not discuss much more regarding these components because according to your NCRT book or syllabus about these topics it will be uh, you will learn from the next chapter which is components of food from there you will get to know about this much more. So now I will say about the classification of food classification of food. So, first of all, two types are there. I have already written over here. First, energy giving foods. Energy giving foods means by intaking such type of foods, you will get more and more energy to do all sorts of work. These foods are carbohydrate and fat. If you take these type of food items, you will get more and more energy to do work. One more thing with that I want to say, if you will take the same amount of fat and carbohydrate both, then you will get more energy from the fat rather than the same amount of carbohydrate. This is the main thing you have to keep in your mind. Next is bodybuilding foods. What are called bodybuilding foods? Basically, such type of food items in taking that, if you will intake these bodybuilding foods first of all it will repair in your body the damaged cells it will keep your body disease free or it will fight against the diseases third it will help for your growth like protein vitamins etc by intaking this type of food basically protein it will help for your growth second by taking vitamins or minerals you can say it will help to fight against the diseases these are the main things regarding the classification of food next so generally one the main vital question or main question it will arise that why we will take food already i have told in the classification of food so the next question will be like that why Will we take food? So the points already it will come from this classification. First, we will take food to get the energy to do work. First point. Second point, it will be if we will take food, it will help for our growth. Already mentioned, which is protein. Third, if we will take food, our body should become disease free or if any diseases should be there, it will fight against those type of diseases. Fourth, 
it will make us strong it will make us strong and last but not the least it is that if you will take food if any cells are damaged in your body so it will help to repair those damaged cells in your body these are the main things that uh, that's why we have to take the food next part is that now what are the primary food for all the living organism what are the main or primary food for all the living organism for all the living organism glucose is the primary food keep in your mind glucose is the primary food now and one more thing with that this glucose can be prepared by all the green plants by the process of photosynthesis by the process of photosynthesis so now one obviously one uh, question will arise in your mind what is glucose so let's see i'm going to write one equation though it is not in your ncert book but i think you should learn in this class only so what is the main equation for the photosynthesis let's see so you can easily see the equation of photosynthesis this is 6 co2 this is balanced equation obviously 6 co2 this is carbon dioxide co2 12 h2o this is water this is water this is carbon dioxide now we know that for photosynthesis we require sunlight and below i have written chlorophyll chlorophyll is a kind of green pigment which all the plants have because without chlorophyll no green plants basically plants are green due to the presence of or in presence of chlorophyll so without chlorophyll plants cannot do the process photosynthesis so what will be the product here already mentioned glucose so this is the formula of glucose you can easily see this is glucose and 6o2 this is called oxygen and third this is water and with energy it will also produce and this energy will be intact in the fruits or basically you can say food in the plants clear so next part is that i have already mentioned here the main keywords now here ingredients what are called ingredients of food basically the materials which are required to prepare one food item the materials which are required to prepare one food item is called the ingredient of that particular food item so now the uh, i'm going to give one example like if you will prepare the boiled rice if you will prepare the boiled rice then for boiled rice the main ingredients is required like rice and then water so these are called the ingredients for the boiled rice now today i think up to this much and in my next class as this this was my means already my first class is going on in my youtube channel so in my next class i will give or i will provide one table where you have to fill it up means
the food items will be given then the ingredients you have to write i will show one and third uh, you have to write the sources beside that in the table and the table is also from your ncert book as you don't have means all don't have the ncert book right now so i will do in my board and with me you will also do the same work so today up to this thank you i hope you all have understood very well if not if you have any queries so please ask me through your school website and i will always uh, available over there to give your answer thank you visit again